so today is Sunday, May 17th. Sunday, May 17th. The number 17 in, in the Bible, the number 17 numer numerology means victory. Everybody say victory. Come on, say victory, amen. And that's exactly what I want to preach on today. I want to preach on the subject. If I had a title, I would title it The Formula for Victory. The Formula for Victory. I'm excited about today's word because I want you to listen to me. I want you to lean in. I want you to listen because I honestly believe, I honestly believe if you will listen and let God speak to you, this word has the potential, listen to me, to change your life forevermore. That's how powerful and that's how strong this word is. This word today, the, the formula for victory can change your life from today forward. Now listen to me, I know everybody's got a past. I know everybody has dealt with something. Listen to me, let it go. Let it go. Do not let your past dictate your future. Come on, somebody. In the Bible, there's a story in the Bible. I love this. And Holy Spirit, please let me preach it the way that you downloaded it in my spirit. There's a story in the Bible about a man named Joseph. In Genesis chapter 41, Pharaoh had a dream. Now listen, this is a crazy dream. And you're going to have to hang with me today because I'm going to go deep with you. But in Pharaoh's dream, he dreamed about seven skinny cows and seven fat cows. And the king asked Joseph, he said, I need somebody to interpret the dream that I just had. Matter of fact, let me back this up with Scripture because I know some of you are probably saying, i never seen seven skinny cows and seven fat cows. I'm going to tell you what the skinny cows represent and I'm going to let you know what the fat cows represent. In Genesis chapter 41, they're going to be putting this on the big screen. I'm reading now the, uh, the CEV, the Contemporary English Version, but I want you to listen. Genesis chapter 41, verses 1 through 4. I love it. Listen to this. Two years later, the king of Egypt dreamed he was standing beside the Nile River. Suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Suddenly, seven fat, healthy cows come up from the river and started eating grass along the bank. Then seven ugly, <laughs> skinny cows came up out of the river and ate the fat, healthy cows. And when this happened, the king woke up. Now, I know this is some strange scripture, but how many of you know if it's in the Bible, it's worth preaching? So let me explain to you, because I really believe this speaks to me, it speaks to you, this speaks to all of us. Because how many of y'all know we're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days? You're going to have good times and you're going to have some bad times in life. So the skinny cows, after I started studying this out, this is so good. The skinny cows represent bad days, famine, plagues, darkness. And the fat cows represent years of plenty, years of victory, number 17, May 17th, years of victory and the years of overflow. So here's, I know we get confused. I want to clarify something really quick before I even start preaching. The Bible is not just our manual and our navigational system in the good days. It also teaches us how we should live, how we should act. In the bad times, the hard days, the, the sick days, and the dark days. The Bible is our answer. You say, Brian, that's too simple. No, try following it. The Bible gives us answers how to get through this COVID-19. The Bible gives us answers. But church, fam, listen to me, friends. Here's what I'm saying. If we're not careful, if I'm not careful, if you're not careful, we're going to allow the skinny cows to eat up our fat cows. We'll become so fixed, so focused on, on the bad, the bad, gloomy, dark days, we'll it'll start eating up the good days in our life. You'll start focusing on one bad thing, one bad thing, and it will start eating up the big, massive good things in your life. That's preaching really good right there. Acts chapter 2, we, we talk about this all the time, and, and I want to... I I want to show you something God downloaded in my heart. Maybe this will bless you. Acts chapter 2 was when the first century church was birthed. Acts chapter 2 was when the Holy Spirit, I love this, was poured out on everyone in the upper room. Y'all would agree with that. Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. 
and, and they were poured out on them in the upper room. And listen to me, once the Holy Spirit was poured out in the upper room, everything changed. Everything changed. So here's what the Lord downloaded in me. We need the Holy Spirit to saturate our upper rooms. What is the upper room? I'm glad you asked. It is your head. It's the upper part of the body. If he will saturate your head, your mind, and our thinking, because when the bad times come, and they're going to come, some of you may have a bad day today. I don't know. It's going to come. But listen, if your mind and your head and your thinking and if your upper room hasn't been baptized, I'm going to say something. Listen to me. If your upper room has not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you will become down, you'll become critical, you'll become depressed, you'll become discouraged, you'll become negative, you'll become rude, and you'll become an angry person. So church, here's what God's spoken to me, and you can say what you want to say, God still speaks. Here's what he, he, he said unto me. We need a spirit-filled, baptized brain. We, I, you, we need a spirit-filled, baptized brain. Isn't it funny? God says, you go to the upper room. You get away from things that are happening down here, and you go up there. We need a spirit-filled, baptized brain to help us deal with the bad times and not lose focus on the good times. Somebody say amen to that. That's so good. So here's my question. Are you ready? Do you have a spirit-filled, baptized brain? Hey, has God touched your upper room? Hey, what's going on in your mind right now? Listen, I, I've, I, I guess here's what, here's what God's telling me. I realize we got medical doctors. They're going to give you a medical answer. But I feel my job is to give you a spiritual answer. Listen, I am a spirit. I have a soul, but I live in a body. If you want to get things fixed down here, you got to change up here. You got to change your upper room. You got to change your upper room. One man said it like this We need a checkup from the neck up. We need a checkup from the neck up. If you don't get a checkup from the neck up, listen to me, it's just a matter of time. I promise you, I deal with this every day. If you, if we don't get a checkup from the neck up, if we don't get an upper room baptized of the Holy Spirit in our brains, if we don't get a fat cow mentality, it's just a matter of time before you start having, if you don't get a checkup from the neck up, it's just a matter of time before you start having stinking thinking. Yep. You will start letting, listen, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Spirit. You will start letting the bad eat up and swallow up the good. In your life. And listen to me, I'm going to say this. That is not God's will for your life. That is not God's will for your life. Here's what I've noticed in my own personal life. This is me. This is my sermon so I can preach it how God gave it to me. Whatever you focus on will become magnified in your life. Whatever you start focusing on will become magnified in your life. So I guess my question to you is this morning, how big is your God? Come on, somebody. How big is your God? Is he magnified in your life? Or is he minimized in your life? Is he, after everything happens, is he your go-to? Or is he, before everything happens, you run to him? See, listen to me. Do you see good or do you see bad? You know what? You can hang around somebody for five minutes. Five minutes. A little less than that. Five minutes. And you will know exactly if, they've, if their brain's been baptized by the Holy Ghost. You'll know. You'll know. You hang around somebody for two, three, four, five minutes. You'll know if they had an upper room experience. You'll know that. Listen, there should be something different about the church. There should be something different about a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled man or woman of God. We are not of this earth. We are a pilgrim passing through a foreign land. There should be a different, there should be an upper room experience in our life. Listen to me. Are you allowing the skinny cows to eat up the fat cows? Let me go deeper with you. I thought I started thinking about this. What if you was walking through the woods and a poisonous snake bites you and your leg starts to swell? So you have a decision to make. You have a decision to make. You can get ticked off at the snake, mad at the snake, 
and start chasing the snake through the woods, trying to get back at it for what it did to you. And during the meantime, listen to me, listen to me, you're killing yourself and you're speeding up your own death by chasing a snake. Or, watch this, you can let God handle the snake. You can let God deal with the snake. And you can go find a great physician and get healed. Some of you are so worried. Oh, I, knew, I know this is a word straight from heaven. Some of you are so worried about the stinking snake. You're chasing people who's hurt you. You're so worried about the problem of the bad. Listen to me, you're losing time. You're losing your life. And watch this, you know what the definition of unforgiveness and revenge is? Here's what the definition of unforgiveness and revenge is. You drink poison hoping it will kill your enemy. I'm going to say it again. Some of you are so worried about the snake, the problem, the bad. You're losing time. You're losing your life. And the definition of unforgiveness and, and revenge is you are drinking poison hoping it will kill the enemy. Yeah, maybe you are divorced. But don't let the bad eat up the good. Yes, maybe someone did hurt you. But don't let the bad eat up the good. Maybe you did get fired from your job, but don't let the bad eat up the good of the rest of your life. Let it go. Let the snake go. Let the past go. Let your ex-husband go. I feel the Holy Ghost. Let your ex-wife go. And don't let the bad eat up the good. Don't let the skinny cow, the minor things, kill the fatted calf. Isn't it funny, God just spoke this to me. When the prodigal came home, come to his senses, the upper room. Oh, this is so good. Listen, I'm not that smart. Only God can do this stuff. The prodigal son, Luke 15, says that he come to his senses. He had an upper room experience. Changed his heart, changed his mind. Watch, changed his direction. He quit chasing the snake. The Bible said he, he come to his senses and he started making his way home. On his way home, could you imagine what he was thinking in the upper room? But I love this because the daddy didn't kill the skinny cow. The daddy didn't give him a leftover ring, a torn robe, or two messed up shoes. He said, go kill the fatted calf. Hallelujah. Here's what God's speaking to me right now. Some of you have lost your dreams, but God's getting ready to give you a fat dream. God, some of you... I'm telling you, if you'll listen to me and lean in and quit, quit negotiating what the Bible says and start believing, I'm telling you, there's a fat cow, hallelujah, coming your way. Some of you are so fixed. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. You're so fixed and you're so focused on COVID-19, you're missing the good in your life. Mm, mm, mm. Some of you are so focused on your ex, you're missing the children in your life. Some of you are focused on what's wrong, what's bad, the skinny cow, and you are missing what's right, what's good, that God is for you, that no weapon formed against you should ever prosper. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's good in Jesus. I know, I started thinking about this too. I know we praise God. We praise God for all the good things in our life. I know we do. I do. All the good things that's happening in our life. But as I was preparing this, I, want you, I started praising God, thanking God for the things in my life that didn't happen to me. Hmm. That didn't happen to me. I shouldn't be standing here right now. I should not be your pastor, Elkhorn Baptist. I'm a divorced man. I know some people are like, Brian, don't go there, my God. No, no, no. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Because if I was not, if I did not have a past, I would not be elevated where I'm at today. Whew. Can y'all imagine? Whew, my God, I feel the Where we would be, who we would be with, if it had been for the Lord. I praise God for the good. 
See, this is going to be a different sermon for some of you because some of you, you just believe in the prosperity gospel and that God is. I, I believe that God's prospering you. I, I know he is. But watch this. I also praise him for the bad. I, I'm, I'm about finished. I thought about titling this sermon, Drew, you're like this. Three plus fire equals four. Uh, three plus fire equals four. See, because I would rather, <laughs> this is, my flesh is fighting me right now, but my spirit's saying preach it. I would rather, hallelujah, have Jesus with me in the fire than be in the palace without him. Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Three plus fire equals four. Here's what I wrote. Sometimes the only way you will get to God is to go through the fire. I know, I know, we're Americans. We live in South Central Kentucky. We're the Bible Belt. I'm telling you in Jesus Christ's name, some of the best times. I didn't like the fire. But I'm telling you, the, the most, most times in my ministry, in my marriage, in my life, I found God more in the fire, in the lion's den, through sickness, listen to me, through the storm, and that's exactly where you'll find God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So here's my, here's my prayer, here's my prayer. Don't allow the enemy to eat up the good in your life. Don't allow the skinny cow, the bad days, the hard days. Listen, here's wisdom. Y'all ready? Here's wisdom. When you're in the fire, notice Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't start going, that daggone King Nebuchadnezzar, we're going to die. No. Three plus fire equals four. And I'm telling you, some of you feel like you're in the fire, but thus saith the Lord, I see a fourth man. I see a fourth man. Some of you, you seem like you're, you're going through depression, you're going through anxiety, you're going through fear, you're going through the fire, you're going through COVID-19, but I see a fourth man. Gee, here's what, here's what I wrote, and I want Aaron to put this up here because it's so powerful, and I want to get this in your spirit. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Jesus plus nothing equals everything, but everything minus Jesus equals nothing. I'm going to say it again. Jesus plus nothing. Brian, I don't have anything. If you've got Jesus and born again, saved, on your way to heaven, you've got everything. But if you've got everything and you don't have Jesus, <laughs> you don't have nothing. Joseph is a beautiful picture of what I'm talking about today. And I want y'all to listen. Please, I'm almost done. Think about this just for a moment. Would you have a skinny cow mentality or a fat cow after I tell you this? Joseph's brothers stripped him of all of his clothes and threw him in a pit to die. After it didn't kill him, they sold him into slavery. Potiphar's wife, come on, he keeps going, lied on Joseph and said he raped her. Here's a big one. Joseph spent 14 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. The butler and the baker, they lied on him. They turned their backs on him. Now, I want to show you something I've never seen in the Bible before as I wrap this up. Man, this is so good. And I want you to think about this. Genesis chapter 42, verse 9. Genesis chapter 42, verse 9. I love this. I read this and my spirit just leaped. The Bible says, Then Joseph remembered the dream the Lord gave unto him. I started thinking about this. Joseph didn't remember the, the bad, the skinny cow, the pit, the lies, 14 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Joseph didn't remember all the bad things that happened to him. He remembered, y'all think about this, after he went through prison, the pit, the fire, all these things. His family turned their back on him, said he was dead, tore his clothes off of him. He said, I remember the dream God gave me. I love this. Where would you be? Now, I, listen, I had to ask my, when I, when I prepare sermons, 
I truly have to ask myself, Brian, do you have the skinny cow mentality? Or do you have the fat cow mentality? Do you see the problems or the promises? Are you paying more attention to COVID-19 or the healing? Are you paying more attention to what happened to you 20 years ago? I'm preaching really good. Are you running after the snake that bit you 15, 20, 30 years ago, the person that did you bad? Or are you running to the great physician who can heal you in the upper room? Because if your upper room gets it right, your body will follow. So I love this. Praise team, you guys come. I love this. I love Joseph's dream. I love his dream. Now, I want y'all to think about this. Listen to me. I know I say this a lot, but you've got to get this. You know what breaks my heart? I preach my heart out. I'll preach my heart out. And I'll give you a word that God downloaded into my spirit, and nothing, it seemed like nothing will happen. Watch this. I love the last words. How many of you know the last words of a man? Pretty strong words. Here's the last words of Joseph. Here it is, and I dedicate these words over your life today. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Joseph had been thrown in a pit, sold into slavery, lied on, turned his, they turned his back on him, 14 years in prison that for a crime he didn't do. And he said, I remember a dream that God gave me. And in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, here it is, y'all ready? You meant evil, bad against me. But God meant it for good. God meant it for good. God meant it for good. And watch this. Here it is. Why did God allow bad in my life? He didn't. He meant it for good. In order, watch, to bring about this present outcome. To bring about this present outcome that many people would be kept alive. See, you're not going through your stuff for you. You're going through your stuff for somebody else. You know how many people I have been able to help who, who's going through a divorce, who, who has lost children in their life? I've lost two babies. I know what the fire's like, but three plus fire equals four. And I know this is probably not going to be a popular sermon, but everything in your life has purpose. And I declare today what Satan has stolen from you. Come on, somebody. What he's hurt you, harmed you, or just tried to destroy your life. God is going to turn it around. God's going to give it back to you. God's going to put a fat calf in your life. I just need somebody to believe that with me. That God can take, listen to me, a divorced person and turn it around. God can take... A sickness, come on somebody, and turn it around into health. God can take a lonely person and put a comforter right there beside him. God can take a mountain in your life and cast it into the sea. The problem with churches, Christians, people, is they got a skinny cow mentality. And they are allowing one bad day dictate a whole year preaching good they're allowing a COVID-19 y'all watch me good God more people have died over the flu and I'm not making light of this one person that dies is too much but I'm telling y'all I want y'all listening to me some of you are paying more attention to COVID-19 than you are the promises of God Can I, can I, I'm going to land the plane real quick. I know I'm looking at y'all. I can see y'all. I can't see them. You know what I'm saying? So let me preach to y'all. I'll, I'll do both of you. What if I told you God says in the Bible, Revelation, last book, Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, praise team, thus saith the Lord, May 31st is going to be a new thing. I declare that. I declare that. Well, Brian, what about the skinny cows? My fat cow getting ready to kill them. 
Fat cow means plentiful. I can recognize that. God says, Holly, I'm wanting to, listen to me, I'm wanting to do a new thing in your life. But God spoke this to me. Listen to me. God is wanting, Brian is wanting to do a new thing in your life. JT's wanting to do a new thing in your life. But we're allowing the skinny cow to rob us of the new thing because we are paying more attention to what somebody done to us, somebody hurt us, there's a snake that bit me. And we're chasing the snake and not going to the healer. So I'm going to ask us and you, are you, listen, are you going to allow God to do a new thing in your life? Elkhorn, listen to me. I do not want to go back and be like we was in 2015, 2010. I don't want that. I want a new thing. I want God to bless us going in and bless us going out. You gotta have an upper room. I feel the Holy Ghost. You gotta have an upper room. Woo! I never looked at Acts chapter 2 like that. I always paid attention to tongues and I always paid attention. And God says, you know what? You can speak in tongues, but if you ain't got chains up here. Mm. Woo! I'm drinking new wine today. God, Elkhorn, Brian, you're crazy. No. You, you, you got a skinny cow mentality. I declare we will come out of this. I declare it's going to be a greater movement than everybody has, anybody has ever seen. It's going to be greater than Pentecost. It's going to be greater than the Great Awakening. God is doing a new thing. Matter of fact, when he said you get to heaven, there's going to be a new song. Here it is. I'm done. i got to stop. The only way you, me, uh, we will not receive a new thing from God is if we hang on to the skinny cow. We hang on, we don't have an upper room, change the transformation. We're allowing the skinny cow to eat up the fat cow. And I wrote this down. Y'all listen to me, I'm done. I think three times, that's good. Watch out for the skinny cows. God just spoke his mind. Sometimes, the reason why I believe the skinny cows was so good. The reason why the skinny cows ate the fat cows, because the fat cows got satisfied where they were at, and the skinny cows became hungry. Did y'all get that? Did y'all, did we, no, did we get that? Elkhorn, if we're not careful, we'll get comfortable. Well, nobody else is doing this. Nobody else is doing this. And I'm telling you the reason why the skinny cow ate the fat cow because the fat cow got, it got comfortable where it was at and the skinny cow became hungry. Mm, mm, mm. How many of y'all are hungry today? How many of y'all are hungry today? Is that just a song that y'all sung or was that from your heart today? Did y'all have an upper room experience? Because listen, here's what I know. If the praise team has an upper room experience, we'll fill it out there. The world will change. Everything will change. I declare today, Elkhorn Baptist Church, where our brains are going to get baptized. We're going to get baptized. There's going to be a new thing. Watch out for the skinny cows. Watch out. Here's what the Bible says. Watch out for the little foxes. Because the little spot foxes will spoil the vine. We got to, one pastor said this Wednesday night. He said it's time for the church to become wolf killers. Huh. Wolf killers, wolf killers, wolf killers, wolf killers. Watch out for the little foxes. Watch out for the skinny cows. Watch out for the small, small mind mentality. If you don't have an upper room experience, I promise you, you'll go right into that stuff. So, I'm going to say a prayer. Maybe I'm speaking to you. This sermon ate me for supper. It's still dealing with me, to be honest with you. Seven skinny cows ate seven fat cows. Because the fat cows got comfortable, laid back, and the skinny cows became hungry. God says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So, if I'm talking to you, 
I want you just to say this prayer. Listen, some of you, I'm not saying you're lost. I'm not saying you're lost. I'm just saying, listen, you have allowed the world, you have allowed something to come in and overtake the upper room. Upper room. We need a Holy Spirit baptized brain. I wonder if we talked about God as much as we talked about COVID-19. I'm sick of it. Talk about Jesus. Talk about where he brought you from. Talk about that he saved your soul. Talk about where he's, he's helped you and he's delivered you of alcohol. He's delivered you of all the things in your life. You'll get farther like that because if you give God praise, he'll draw people unto himself. I got to go. We need Holy Spirit baptized brain. It starts in the upper room. You got to have a checkup from the neck up. And that's what I'm here for today. We're going to have a checkup from the neck up. Where are you at today, sir? Ma'am, where are you at today? Are you paying more attention to the negative things, the snake in the garden, the snake that bit you 20 years ago? You've got unforgiveness in your life. You're drinking poison in your life, hoping it's going to kill your enemy. It don't work like that. So if you want Jesus, if you want to turn this around, if you want God just to come on in, here's what God just told, told me. When a good thing enters into your life, the bad will leave. So, if you're ready for the Savior, if you're ready for Jesus Christ, if you're ready for a turnaround, if you're ready for a checkup from the neck up, if you're ready for your, for your mind to be baptized in Jesus, but you don't know Him, I highly recommend you ask Jesus to save you today. I just want you to say this prayer. Y'all ready? Say, dear God, come on. Say, dear God, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And today, right now, I repent. I turn from my evil ways. And I'm asking you to come into my life, my heart, my spirit, my soul, my body. Save me. God also baptize my brain. Let me become what you have created me to be. I pray this prayer believing that all things are possible. I pray this prayer believing that I'm saved. In Jesus.